Hey guys, how's it going? My name's Paul. Today we've come all the way down to Adelaide for the brand new showroom at Maverick Camper Trailers. We're going to test drive their brand new Hornet Camper Trailer and go all the way to the Flinders Ranges. I can't wait, I'm very excited. Matt, why don't you introduce yourself and tell me a bit about your business. Hi, I'm Matt. Yeah, we've got a fantastic business at Maverick Campers. We've been so blessed with the uh, uptake of the public with, with our brand. Um, and so now we've uh, taken a big new plunge with a brand new shiny showroom. So compared to our humble beginnings, so we're a family run business yep. and we are expanding around Australia rapidly with uh, various dealers coming on board. And uh, yeah, we're set to uh, you know, impress with our new showroom and, and we're still working through it all because yep. it takes a bit of time. But yep. yeah, we're, uh, we're going through a very busy period right now as with uh, a lot of the area industries. And yeah, we're set for some, uh, some big times ahead. Awesome. Let's go check out the Hornet. Right, so this is the Hornet Limited, brand new out. Why don't you tell me a bit, a bit about it? Yeah, hi, this is a fantastic uh, entry level camper or someone that just wants to have some real, real basics of camping. So you've got your, um, your full tent up the top, so very different to the um, West traditional camper, and you've got heaps of uh, storage in the, in the main body area, so you can still fit a very you know, large fridge inside. Yep. You've still got your cookers, you've still got your water, 120 litres of water on board. Uh, with some options, you can have you know hot water showers and inverters, a whole range of different options that you can you can go for. Yep. But it's a very uh, lightweight camper, so a lot of vehicles can can have a tow, even the old Hilux. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So there's uh, lots of different options that you can you can uh, various vehicles can tow with this one. So very heavy duty off road as well. So those of you that want to go, um, you know, a bit more of the heavy heavy style, but you know very low profile and very narrow, so yep. get in a lot of your tight your tight tracks, you have some uh, good options left to get in there. Awesome, can't wait to test it out. All right, let's go hook it up. Wanna be the first who knows all of your deepest secrets. Can I be the one who wakes you up before you miss your ride? Cause I wanna be close to you. And I wanna show you something new. You gotta know. Every day I got your back, yeah, you can count on me for that. So put your hand in mine, I will be there every day. When you're sick of the climb, I will make sure it's okay. I know you didn't ask for any of this, but we read for the sky. Cause we're flying colors now. Just put up for camp uh, in the Paratilna Gorge. I've uh, been here once before. This is my favorite camping site I've ever been to. The view from here is amazing. Now, unfortunately, this is our last night in the Flinders Ranges. So I thought it was a good opportunity to run through the camper trailer. Uh, we've been testing it over the past week. We've been through the whole Flinders Ranges, given an absolutely flogging, um, and it's held up really well. So let's run through how we found the camper trailer this week. As you can see, after a week in the Flinders, this thing is absolutely filthy. We've been through, we've had rain, um, it's been through that much dust, bull dust, and yeah, it's been driven for a week non-stop in the Flinders Ranges. Now I have the seals held up. I'm pleased to say most of them have. In here, there's not a speck of dust around the seal. I reckon there's only one door we've opened up so far that's had some dust in it. But I think that um, might just be the hinges need tightening up. The seals have been really good so far. 
For those of you that haven't towed an off-road camper trailer before, the hitch is completely different to a standard uh, trailer. You don't have the normal bull hitch here. It's a pivoting hitch, so it's really secure. Uh, that way, if you're on a big angle you, and you tip over, um, the camper trailer doesn't come with you, or same thing again, if the camper trailer tips over, it doesn't pull the car with it. It articulates and it's a much safer option. Now, this is a really built up front end, extremely strong. I'm really surprised on how well engineered this front end is. Um, even the jockey wheel, the jockey wheel is very heavy duty, comes with a removable handle, twin wheels on it. So simply lift that, lock that in, put your handle in. start winding. I always, every single time, no matter how many times I do this, always wind it the wrong way. I'll get this down onto the ground. That'll do for now. Now undo the hitch. One thing I was concerned about is being able to leave this camper trailer somewhere and drive off with the vehicle and still have a home base without worrying about someone taking off with the camper trailer. But they've supplied this lock here, so you don't need to worry about that. That comes off easily. Remove your pin. That all comes out. And actually use this. Undo the hitch until it's moving freely like that. And now we can go up more with the jockey wheel. Now as we go up, you'll see it should release off of the tongue. There it goes. Very similar to a ball. That's it, and then you just get your chains and your trailer plug, and then we'll put the back feet down. Oh yeah, don't forget the handbrake. Some of the things to consider when you're looking at purchasing a camper trailer, or even a caravan. Um, what sort of hitch you have on your tow bar, what sort of trailer plug you have, round, uh, flat, or 12 pin. Uh, does the 12 pin or flat need any live wires? To the camper trailer or caravan to power fridges or anything like that um, or does it also need an anson plug this one for example you plug an anson plug into your tow bar which means you've got to set your car up with an anson plug to your battery so as you're driving along it charges up the batteries in the camper trailer so they're always ready and ready to go when you uh, <laughs> arrive at camp in the back door here we've kind of got all our stuff stored in here but normally you'd store your fridge. This is a huge fridge slot here, so you can fit a pretty big fridge in here. Uh, it's got an Anderson plug socket and a cigarette socket, so depending on which socket you've got on your fridge, it'll supply power to both of those. Um, they supply your wheel chocks, and your T-bar uh, for lowering your legs at the back. So simply support the weight, pull these pins, drop them down. And now watch me get this direction wrong again. Oh wow, I got it right first go. We'll drop both of them down now, level it out. Now that the car's moved, you can see it's got a, a huge stone deflector here, angled downwards, that way when your car flicks up rocks, hits this, bounces back downwards, rather than coming back up and smashing your back window. It's got a huge A-frame, massive spare wheel here, there's three storage um, bins here. You can fit two jerry cans. I've got one in there oh, full at the moment. Um, a big storage area at the front here. It's lockable. And it's on gas struts. That's huge in here. You can fit heaps of stuff in that one there. This side here, it's got your gas bottle storage here. You can fit a full nine kilo gas bottle in this section here. Now you can see having the wheel right at the back there and a huge A-frame leading along. Um, gives you a huge approach angle. We've been on some um, really steep uh, creeks. You go really steep down and then straight away, it goes straight back up again. And we've had no issues with scraping at all. For off-road, this has been absolutely perfect. Now, when you purchase one of these, it does have a full pull-out kitchen here um, with your cookers and bench top and everything else. Your gas inlet, uh, you got a 12-watt socket here and a light socket there. You got storage space up the top here.
Got to pull out drawer here, all the important stuff in it, beer. Plenty more storage space down the bottom there. This one here, oh, it has like a little bit of dust in it as well, but we've been through extreme dust though. It's been really, really bad. Latches work really well. This one here, it comes up with a stereo. Uh, it's got speakers, there's one of your batteries there, so you get a little bit of storage room here. We'll go have a look around the other side. This camper trailer was brand new when we picked it up. <laughs> no one's used it before, <laughs> and now it is that dirty. Oh, come on. All right, that top section there, that one goes all the way through. So if you've got any long poles or anything like that, you can store through there or chairs, whatever you've got. Um, you've got storage section here too with a fire extinguisher. This one here, same as the other side. Storage down the bottom there with another drawer that comes out here. Come on. They're a bit sticky sometimes, they're still new. Got your charger here. If you go pull up in a caravan park or if you're at home, you can charge straight from 240 volt. Now, you get a switchboard here, your power straight away. It shows your level in your water tank. Underneath there, there's a 120 litre water tank, which is bloody fantastic. Uh, we've never had more than 20 litres when we go out and for a week that's not enough. So this has been a godsend, 120 litres. Um, your fridge, so that sends power to the fridge plug over there. Your sockets, uh, lights, this comes with lights as well, um, and also strap-on lights for the awning. So plenty of lights. Media for the stereo, and the water pump. I'll come around the other side, we'll turn it on. When you have your kitchen plumbed up, you'll have pressurised water straight to your kitchen taps. You've got a huge internal storage area here for anything you don't mind getting wet if it rains. So we've been putting our chairs and tables and everything up here. Uh, even the solar panels and stuff. You can access it, there's three doors right around it so you can access it from any side. And now we'll have a look at the fun stuff. Close that one. Comes with a 270 degree awning. Hey. Look at this. I love this. First though, we'll set up the rooftop tent. One thing I do like, there's steps the entire way around so that you can easily get up and undo all your straps. One dislike we've found with rooftop tent, uh, it's very hard to try and get under here behind the awning to undo the zip to get the cover off. And also once the rooftop tent is set up, trying to put your poles to the windows in Side ones you can get in fine. This one here to have your little veranda awning bit with the pole, two poles in it. You cannot get those poles in here because of the awning. Um, but they do have different options available. You've either got your soft top like this one here and have got the, the hard shell roofed up tents as well, which you just come to the back, undo your two clips, push it up and that's it, you're done. So that's a much better option. Now the rooftop tent's up, you can see what I mean. Those windows there, you can op open up with the poles and have a nice view out of them. But this piece here, which normally comes up with two poles on it, you can't reach those because of the awning. You may think because this is only a two man rooftop tent, it's only suitable for a couple, but that's not true. The rooftop tent here um, is available with an annex, like what I used to have as well. Attaches here, fully seals around here. Um, we used to have three kids sleeping underneath the ladder here, fully enclosed. Um, they had their own um, air mattresses and that, and they loved it. So we fit two adults and three kids. So you don't need one of the big fold-out ones. Um, for sure, if you want your own uh, kitchen and everything inside there, then definitely go that. If you've got a bigger family or an older kids, then that's the way to go. But if you've got a young family or just the two of yours, then something small like this. Um, and actually, this was perfect for my car. I can't tow those really big camper trailers. They're very heavy, so you take that consideration when you're purchasing a camper trailer. What can your vehicle tow? Mine, stuff all. <laughs> so I was limited to this. I seen this last year at the four wheel drive show. Absolutely fell in love with it. Um, so I contacted them and asked if I could take it for a test run. This one's brand new out. So I said, sure, we'd love you to take it for a um, test drive and review it. So I've been loving it so far. 
The thing I love about 270 awnings, under your straps, has a couple of poles already in here. We'll set those aside for a minute. I wish mine did this. One motion. Then simply strap it back here and it's done. This is a freestanding 270 awning. It has one built-in pole already, ready to go. If you're in any kind of wind, I would recommend putting these down and strapping it down too. You don't want to lose this in strong winds, but for general use, it is freestanding. So there's just little eyelets up the top here with the extra poles just locate in. Come down, lock in. And same again over here. Now the awning's up, you have a huge shaded area for your whole family. It does also have Velcro the whole way around it too. Um, so there are walls available for this awning. Been really happy with the heavy duty independent suspension in this as well. It's handled everything we've taken it through. Uh, of course, we dropped the tire pressures and everything else, but I couldn't have asked for anything better. Overall, this has been a great camper trailer to test out. I think it's definitely worth the money. If I could afford it, I would definitely have it myself. And then I'd completely change my own setup. But for now, I just got to stick with what I've got. But if you guys have got any more questions about this at all, don't hesitate, leave a comment. I'm always happy to answer. If I've missed anything, let me know. If you liked the video and found it helpful, leave a like. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. But thanks for watching the video, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.